Hi, in this class I'm going to show you how to install and configure the Expose Picker. The Picker is an essential tool to be fast animating, since you will be able to select the control you want without needing to have it visible on the viewport. This will give you a much cleaner view of your character and allow you to select the controls much quicker. Once you have downloaded it, to install it we'll go to Edit, Preferences and in the add-on section we'll click on install. Next we'll go to the folder where we have the zip file and once selected we'll click on install add-on. Now we will write Pika in the search box and make sure the Pika is activated. As you can see now in the floating panel it will appear a new section called Expose Pika. Open it Click on Picker Start, open the drop down panel called Host Preferences, and activate the option Gizmos on Transforms. And remember that you'll have to check this box every time you create a new Blender file. Now we only have to open the picker of the character that we're going to use and start animating. To use it every time you want to select a control you must select the tool you want to use so that it appears over the joint that you're going to modify. That's why it is essential that you use the hotkeys W, E and R to select the tools quickly. If you're using another character and you want to have multiple pickers open at the same time, just go to File. Append tab, select and open the picker you want to use, click on Untitled and click OK. You also have the option to keep it at the front of the screen, or let it go into the background by turning on and off the push pin icon. If you want to create a new picker, firstly you'll have to create an image of the character, either by taking a screenshot or rendering an image. Import it to the picker using this icon. Then select one of its controls and click on Set Namespace so that the picker links with the rig. Now just select the controls one by one. Right click on the picker and left click on add one button. Below you can set the color, size and name of the button. And if you want to change the position of an already created button, hold Ctrl plus left click on it to move it. Now just have to save it wherever you want and that's it, your picker is done. Hi, in this class I'm gonna show you an example of a picker that I created. I recommend that before you start animating a new character, you experiment a little with its controls to see what each one does and their limitations. Okay, so the white buttons are the arms and legs configuration controls. In the first option you can configure the FK controls to be independent of the body rotations. Zero means that they will rotate with the torso. And one that they will remain independent. Also you can choose if you'll animate it with IK or FK, zero being IK and one being FK. And if you choose IK, here you can set the maximum stretching level that the limb can have. On the IK space switch option, or in this character called root parent, you will determine if the IK controls will move together with the central control 
or will remain in the same place. But almost every time you use IK, you will want to set this option to zero, so the IK controls only move when you move them. And of course, keep in mind that depending on the character you are using, the names of these controls may vary. The blue buttons are the legs and arms FK controls. And the red ones are the IK controls, of which there are two for the hands, two for the legs, two to set the orientation of the elbows, two to set the orientation of the knees, and two for the special rotations of both feet, which are designed to animate the rotations of the feet when they are touching the ground. But make sure that you don't rotate the same axis with the normal rotations and the special rotations at the same time, as the special rotations will change the pivot point of the general rotations, making it much harder to animate and polish. The green controls are the universal ones. These can be used regardless of the configuration that you have. They are the head, the neck, the shoulders, the torso, the central control, the hips, the fingers of the hands, and the toes. If we go to the central control, we'll see that two extra options appear, head follow and neck follow. With these, we can determine if the head and neck follow the torso rotations or maintain their individual rotations. Zero meaning that they remain independent. and one that they will rotate with the torso. The grey buttons are the polishing controls, which you will only use when you have almost finished your animations to make small adjustments, correct pops or arc body parts. And finally, the black control below is the positioning control, which you will only use to position and orient your character before you start animating it, but you'll never create any animation on this control. Another very important thing to keep in mind is that when you are using several characters and you want to select a control from another picker, before selecting the other control, make sure to first left click on the viewport to deselect everything. Because, for example, if you have selected one control of this rig and you want to select a control of the other one, the previous control will not be deselected, so any action you make would affect both controls. And that's it for now. See you on the next class.